This video shows how to enable a hardware token based second factor authentication in Teleport. Teleport implements the Web Authentication API or WebAuthn, which is a W3C specification for passwordless authentication using public key cryptography. By default, only TOTP based second factor is enabled for user authentication. But it's super easy to enable WebAuthn in Teleport with simple update on the config file. Let's go to our terminal where teleport server is installed. And we'll open a teleport config file, which is located in SADC and teleport.yml. So in this config file, we'll need to update the auth service keys and add details to web button. First, we'll need to add a key that's authentication And under authentication, we need to add a type which will be local. And this is only valid for local teleport users. And we need to provide second factor, the value on. And lastly, define a section for web button where we need to provide the RPID which stands for relying party identification or identifier. And here you need to provide a value of teleport proxy. In this case, uh, the teleport proxy's address is tele.teleporters.dev. Yeah, this is the minimum uh, values required for web authentic configuration. We'll now save the file and exit and we'll just need to restart teleport server restart teleport yep now the server side configuration for web button is complete uh, as you can see it's super easy and the only step required now uh, is for users to enroll their hardware token so there's two methods to do that in teleport First one using the Teleport web UI and the other one using Teleport DSH client. We'll show you the both methods. To add a hardware token using the web UI, uh, first uh, we'll go to Teleport UI. In this case, uh, the user is already logged in. We'll just need to refresh the browser so that it can pull the latest configuration data from Teleport server. And Go to account setting, click on two-factor devices, and as you can see, this user already has a default TOTP device enrolled. Now to add a second device, we'll click add two-factor device. And first teleport requires users to prove the identity. Uh, it's just a, a, a second factor step to add another device. Uh, in this case, the default one is TOTP, so we're going to provide a value for TOTP code. Five, now we are in the menu to add a new hardware key. I'll give this key name UB and add a device. Uh, I'm going to tap a UB key that's connected to my machine. And done. So we have just added a uh, hardware token and teleport. So this is just one way to add. Uh, I'm also going to show you how we can add using teleport DSH client. Uh, to do that, uh, I'll just remove the hardware key that I have enrolled now so that I can show how can enroll using the DSH client. Okay. Let's go to terminal again. Okay, DSH LS. So I already have a logged in and teleport cluster using TSH. I just have to do is DSH MFA add and select web author and give this device a name. UV 
two. And I need to provide the TOTP code again. Fix true fix. And tap the security key. Done. So this is where you can add a hardware token via TSH client. Now just go to web UI again and let's see if it is working as expected. So for, and but this time we'll be using the hardware key to log in. Teleport admin. Login. Just tapping my hardware key. And we are in. Okay, that was super easy to configure WebAuthn. Now for further use cases, uh, recommend to go and check out the documentation site at goteleport.com docs access control slash guide slash web button, where you can find more details on regarding the configurations values. Uh, the major one I would like to point out here is you can also use attestation allowed and attestation denied values that allows you to restrict which device models and vendors uh, you can tr you trust that you would want users to enroll into your organization's teleport clusters. So that is the main part. But again, I recommend you go and check out the documentation site. So that's it for this video. Happy teleporting.